I'm Shenzhen Lady Angela. Today I'm at the beautiful beach site in Xichong, Shenzhen, and I'm here to meet a scientist and her team. They don't just study the ocean, they live and breathe their passion for it. We look at what we call land ocean continuum, environmental and ecological science. I think my team actually maybe have more women than men. They have a lot of arm power. We wanted to establish a popular science base here about you know zero carbon lifestyle. Could you just tell us, like in a nutshell, what you are, what kind of project that you are working on currently? We're looking at the nitty gritty of how um, things get from land to the ocean, and once we figure this out, we can try to reduce this pollution loading to the ocean. So, how does your project benefit the natural environment in Shenzhen? How will it? Like one day. If you have wastewater, you know, sewage, even mistreated, re re releases nitrogen and phosphates to the river, and that's the food, you know, for plants, which is marine algae. We can put in programs to reduce their loading. You can use wetlands, you can use buffer zone, you can use subsurface aquifers to retain these on land. So, moving forward, what do you expect? the Shenzhen government to do in order to improve the environment? <laughs> so a lot of the research I've done have triggered down into the national policies. So I'm hopeful that can also happen here. Um, but I think one of the other things uh, I find really uh, important to do is we wanted to establish a popular science base here uh, through hopefully Shenzhen government support. But this popular science space is going to be about, you know, zero carbon lifestyle. We need to have people aspire to that, the children, the next generation. So, um, Anna, coming to Shenzhen was a big career change for you because you spent 20 years in, in the US, right? Yes. Um, so, I wonder why do you accept this position and what do you see in Shenzhen? I was establishing, you know, doing groundwater and human health study. If you change an environment, you will have new challenges and new problems, and then you have new opportunities for growth. I, I like that. At the time when I came to Sustec, it's still very tiny. I feel they could use me more. So I feel, you know, whatever we, we've done here, it'll have bigger impact on the society. And Sustec has done very well in the, you know, from a no-name university. Because I remember when I came here, I had to go out and recruit students from high school. We made it. It's through a lot of hard work. But I'm trying to say is that, I mean, this is sort of the story of Shenzhen, right? Mm -hmm. Shenzhen was nothing. And people come here, they made stuff happen. I kind of like that. It's, I like the vibe. What you're doing today, how often do you do it? Is it like a big part of your research? So we come here fairly regularly, at least once a month. Um, to take various type of uh, freshwater samples from the rivers to the groundwater to the coastal water. A lot of times science is about methodology and the ability to make great observations like this is also very important to our disciplines. <laughs> This model is for dissolved oxygen measurement. And then if you're going to try to raise children while you're doing a lot of field work, I mean, oceanographers have to go to sea, and then they're gone for two months. So it's tough. Can you take your kids with you? You cannot take your kids with you, so you have to have your mom. <laughs> you have to have a grandma. Moms are the best. <laughs> I think behind every successful woman scientist, there is a village of support. After speaking with Professor Zheng Yan, I see not only a scientist, but a woman redefining possibilities for our oceans, our cities, and women like us. 
Her journey mirrors countless women balancing laps and life, proving science thrives when we uplift diverse voices. This May 30, let's honor every woman who turns I can't into watch.